SpaceX will not be launching Starship Flight 12 this month. And the reason isn't because Ship 39 or Booster 19 ran into trouble. In fact, both vehicles are making better progress than ever right now. So, what's the real reason behind this delay? Let's break it all down in today's episode of Alpha Tech. SpaceX has just had a really great week at Starbase, a week where they hit several key milestones in preparation for Starship Flight 12. First, on the 10th, SpaceX successfully installed all 20 booster hold-down clamp arm hoods. Just a few days earlier, they also finished installing a new actuator for the chopsticks on Pad 2. And most recently, the scaffolding around Ship 39 was removed, a clear sign that updates to the vehicle are now complete. Ship 39 is expected to roll out to Massey site soon for cryogenic testing, where it'll undergo cold pressure checks. But here's the twist. Despite all of this sounding like great news, real progress that feels like a late month launch is right around the corner, that's actually not the case. So why not? To understand that, we need to connect the dots and walk through what's really been happening. Let's talk about Ship 39. Once the scaffolding was removed, we finally got a clear look at what SpaceX has been doing to this vehicle. And it turns out, a lot of the work focused on the heat shield system. More specifically, SpaceX spent several days painting strange white, three-dot markings onto the ceramic tiles. These markings line up precisely with the tile mounting plates or attachment pins. Many people believe these dots are reference marks, possibly to guide drilling or to inspect how well the pins hold up under extreme heat. The goal may be to test how securely the tiles stay attached when exposed to plasma during atmospheric re-entry without removing large sections of tiles like on previous flights. The same kind of markings were also spotted on Ship 40's nose cone. But here's where it gets interesting. On Ship 39's nose cone, there are vertical lines running down the center, almost like separation markers. On the left side, each heat shield tile has three white dots, while on the right side, each tile has just one dot placed near the upper edge of the ceramic tile. What's even stranger is that many of these mark spots don't appear to have been drilled at all. And since the scaffolding has already been removed, it's unlikely that more drilling will happen. So, what do you think these white markings on the heat shield are really for? Drop your thoughts in the comments below. And here's the key takeaway. This marking process alone took nine full days inside Megabay 2, starting from when scaffolding first went up around Ship 39 on the 2nd. That timeline goes well beyond what we originally expected, and it's a major reason why a Flight 12 launch this month is now looking increasingly unlikely. In other words, Ship 39 isn't rolling out to Massey's site anytime soon. Right now, SpaceX is prioritizing test tank operations first. On January 9th, a Ship Cryo stand was moved into Mega Bay 2, and the test tank labeled S39.1 was lifted onto that stand. The plan was to transport it to Massey's site for cryogenic testing, with road closures scheduled from midnight to 4 a.m. on the 12th. So, by the time you're watching this video, that test tank has already rolled out to Massey. The goal here is cryogenic testing, loading the tank with supercooled liquid propellants like methane and liquid oxygen to check structural strength, leaks, and overall integrity under extreme cold and pressure. This process typically takes at least two to three days, and only if those tests go well will Ship 39 itself be cleared to roll out to Massey's site. After what happened with Booster 18, SpaceX has clearly become more cautious. These days, they usually test the tanks first before risking the full vehicle. Realistically, that means Ship 39 probably won't reach Massey until around January 15th or 16th. Once it gets there, it'll need at least one full day for pressure testing. After that, Ship 39 would roll back to Mega Bay 2 for additional work, installing the aft flaps and, most importantly, six Raptor engines. And it doesn't end there. Once the engines are installed, Ship 39 has to return to Massey's site again for static fire testing. Normally, SpaceX runs two tests. First, a single-engine static fire using one sea-level Raptor at high thrust, followed by a full static fire to test the entire propulsion system. When you add it all up, installation time, multiple transports, static fires, and then rolling the vehicle back yet again, you're looking at at least two more weeks. That pushes Ship 39's readiness to around January 29th or 30th. 
and that's cutting it extremely close, especially if SpaceX still needs to schedule road closures to move both Ship 39 and Booster 19 out to Launch Pad 2 for final launch preparations. So, because of all that, a launch window in the second week of February looks far more realistic, and honestly a lot more comfortable for SpaceX if they want to deliver a truly clean, impressive flight. And while we're at it, let's talk about Booster 19. Since December 24th, the day SpaceX confirmed that stacking was complete, nearly 20 days have passed, and we still haven't seen any major updates. That's because Booster 19 has been kept tucked behind the doors of Mega Bay 1 for internal inspections. Thanks to these images shared by Senator John Cornyn, taken just yesterday during his visit to Starbase, we're now getting a closer look at the base of Booster 19 inside the Mega Bay. And as you can see, there's still a fair amount of work left before it can roll out to Massey's site for cryogenic testing. And even once those checks are done, SpaceX can't cryo-test Ship 39 and Booster 19 at the same time. For safety reasons, only one vehicle can undergo cryogenic testing in that area at once. That alone further confirms that Flight 12 isn't launching this month. A lot of people agree that pushing the schedule to mid-February makes much more sense. It gives SpaceX a healthier buffer. Trying to force a January launch could mean rushing things, and we've already seen how that can backfire, like with Booster 18. Rushing now would only lead to more delays later. In short, waiting a few extra weeks may be exactly what SpaceX needs to make Flight 12 a success. Do you agree? If you do, drop a Go SpaceX in the comments. If Starship Flight 12 really ends up flying in mid-February, it could land very close to the launch window for Artemis 2, a mission that NASA Administrator Jared Isaacman recently described as, Artemis 2 is a 10-day flight test of SLS and Orion that will send astronauts farther than any human mission before. It is the next step toward returning Americans to the lunar surface and building sustained missions at the moon. In other words, this mission is essentially a modern-day replay of Apollo 8. Back in 1968, Astronauts Frank Borman, James Lovell, and William Anders became the first humans to leave Earth orbit and travel to the moon. They completed 10 lunar orbits in about 20 hours, captured historic images of the lunar surface, and broadcast live back to Earth, all without landing. The key difference this time is duration. Artemis II will last longer, largely because Orion's life support system, known as ECLSS, is far more advanced than anything flown during the Apollo era. Orion can support its crew independently for up to 21 days, limited mainly by onboard consumables. In an emergency scenario, such as a loss of cabin pressure, astronauts can rely on their spacesuits, which remain connected to the spacecraft via umbilicals, allowing them to survive for several days. These systems have been extensively tested on the ground, and some components have flight heritage from the ISS. But Artemis II will be the most critical real-world test yet, validating Orion's 